Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this tutorial I will teach you how to create a modern login window using PySide 6, Material Design, VS Code and QT Quick. The PySide 6 has been completely recreated using the recently released version 6 of QT. However, in this video we will not go into much about this new version, but about how to create applications using Qt Quick without the program Qt Creator. Before we start if you are not yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe and leave your like, it helps a lot to be bringing new videos to the channel. Let's start by installing version 6 of PySide using CMD. In that case I already have it installed. For this tutorial I am using Python version 3.9.1. Let's start by creating a new folder and open versus code to start writing our scripts. I'll start by creating a file called main.py and importing the modules shown in the video. This initialization file of our interface is practically identical to the one used to start an application using version 2 of PySide, just changing PySide 2 for PySide 6. After that we will instantiate the class as shown in the video. The following code is responsible for closing our application correctly after clicking on the close button. Let's create a folder called QML and also create the file responsible for our initial interface. I am using two plugins in VS Code to recognize QML files. The first created by Baptist Benoist and the second created by QTIT. I also like to use a color picker tool called Color Manager that helps in creating HEX colors. Import Qt Quick components as shown in the video and also a new component called Controls Material that will be responsible for the styles of our components in version 2.15. Let's start by creating a window for our application using the Application Window component. Create your properties as shown in the video. If you are unsure of the names of these properties, I will leave a tip at the end of this video, so that you can create your applications without the need for Qt Creator. We will now create the flags that will be responsible for disabling the Maximize button in our window. See that when we run our application the Maximize button will not be active. The next step now is to apply material design to our components. I will use the material theme in the dark color and the material accent in the light blue color that will be responsible for the detailed colors of our application. If you want this window not to be resizable, just replace the Qt dialog with the following command shown in the video.
Let's create a rectangle at the top of our window and apply a blue color material. Use the left, right and top anchors to align this rectangle, and in margins we will put the value 10. Set the radius to 10, and run the application, on my VS Code is using the Ctrl plus F5 keys. After that add a text inside this rectangle that will be the title of our window. Let's center the text horizontally and vertically and also add the white color to that text using the Color Manager plugin that we added earlier in Versus Code. See that an error occurred because I wrote the wrong names, just fix these texts and run the application again. The next step is to add an image to our window, that image will be available in the first links in the description of this video. If you want you can use any other image. Our image was imported successfully, but we need to align it correctly. Set the alignments as shown in the video. This image will have the top alignment relative to the bottom of our top bar rectangle. Now we will add two text fields that will be responsible for username and password. Add the parameters as shown in the video. Anchor this first field relative to the bottom of our image. To speed up this tutorial I'm going to copy and paste this text field that we just created and replace its ID. Anchor this field by username field and add a parameter called echo mode that is responsible for making this a password field. Thank you. 
Next I will add a checkbox just as an example, we will not do anything in this component during this video. Let's add it and align it to the center of our application and leave it its top position relative to our password field. The next step is to add a button that will be responsible for executing the function to check if the username and password are correct. If it is wrong it will change the color of our text fields, if it is correct it will open a window that we will create soon. We will now create a JavaScript function that will check if the user field and the password field correspond to standard passwords that we will put in our application. Add a QT object and also two new properties called user and pass with the data you want. You can do this function directly using Python as backend. I will be leaving a card on top video showing how to create the back end in Python using Qt Quick. In case you haven't already watched our full Qt Quick and Python course, I'll also be leaving a next card for you to watch. Done this create a function as shown in the video that will check if the username field is equal to the user property user and if the password field is equal to the pass property created above. Use the Qt create component function to open a new window using Qt quick. Soon we will create this new window. If you want to learn how to pass information from one window to another I will leave another card above in this video showing how to do this. To create a new window we can copy this information from the top and paste it into a new file called appqml. We can also copy the same material design settings and paste in this new window. After that we will add this JavaScript function that we just created to our button. Add this function by passing the username and password parameters by sending their text object. See that our function is working correctly. But we will now add another function if the username and password is incorrect will change the color of our text field. What this function will do is change the property of the material design to pink if this field is incorrect and return to blue if it is correct. Repeat the same process for the password field changing to the correct objects.
see that our validation is working correctly. We reached the end of another tutorial, but before we finish I will leave a very important tip for you. If you have questions about the names of the components used in Qt Quick you can directly access the official website of Qt Company where you will have access to all the names of these components and also examples of how to use them correctly. If you like this video please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.